All right, we're back talking NASCAR on Mystery Caution and Prime Sports Network. So you can check us out on both channels. Of course, Prime Sports Network is our primary channel, but we are branching off to uh, individual channels like our motorsports channel here at Mystery Caution. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, uh, especially if you enjoy the videos. Uh, the more subscribers we get, the easier it'll be for us to amp up uh, the technology, the editing, everything to continue to give you the very best uh, information to help you to uh, win in your fantasy league or make some money. If that's possible in NASCAR, which actually we figured out last year it was. So how's it going, CJ? It's going well. How about you? Thanks for having me back. Yeah, well, you know, you're the only one I could find. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the word of confidence. <laughs> so anyway, uh, big day on Sunday. How did it go for you? That was your uh, day of days. Uh it was the day of days. It was just rained out beyond belief at every possible turn. Yeah. Uh, started off with Monaco, very predictable race. I um, no, I think there were maybe two, three passes throughout the entire race, which Ooh. was absolutely dramatic. And they were all at the back of the field, which made it even more spectacular. Uh, then we had the world's longest rain delay for the Indy 500. Uh, had a great Indy 500 race. Uh, so that was good. Uh, but then also encountered the rain at Charlotte, which ended those proceedings more than 200 miles before the finish, which was very disappointing because the whole thing about that race is its length, right? The 600 miles. And we, <laughs> we didn't, even, didn't even come close to that, just barely over halfway, it seems. So uh, could have been better, but it was still fun. Yeah. It's interesting how NASCAR and now look, I don't know anything about their relationship. And I know it's a different series, so you know that they're competing against each other for, for whatever reason. I'm sure it's marketing that they're all in on this Kyle Larson thing. That's okay. It's good for everybody. Fine. And maybe it's also good for everybody. I don't know. I don't remember what it was like. I, I mean, as far as I remember watching NASCAR for 25 years, I believe they've had this race at the same time, you know, on a Sunday night before Memorial Day. Uh this is just one of those situations, though, where you do have to wonder and think, is this really what we want? Do we really want one of our crown jewel races to not be completed when we could have done a lot of different things to make sure it was completed, like start earlier? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's the craziest thing in the world having one of your one of your signature races on Memorial Day. Is there anything wrong with that? I don't think there is, but no. Definitely not. I, I mean, we've talked about it with all the other races, too. Like, if you're going to insist on that afternoon starting spot, that late afternoon starting spot where in the in the venues that you go to, you always have the threats of thunderstorms and rain at that time of year. Why not consider going earlier? Why not have a contingency plan to do things a little bit differently? Maybe shift the schedule around a little bit. Just change the starting time. You can get a you started earlier. You'd be able to get the whole thing in. Um, for whatever reason, they're beholden to this 4 p.m. type of time slot, which just is that prime thunderstorm activity, yeah. activity time. Yeah. Um, and, and you know this every single year. I think Indy really did a good job this year. There was we, we talked about it. There was the, the threat of rain coming in and we knew that it was going to be roughly uh, that afternoon sometime during the race. And, and that day and in advance, the night before, they started holding press conferences to say, here's our contingency plans. These are the things that we are going to do, uh, which was great. You didn't sit there wondering all yeah. day you know, all morning or whatever, what was going to happen with the Indy 500. You knew exactly what was going to happen with NASCAR. It's the complete opposite. <laughs> you sit there wondering for two hours before they finally decide to wind up calling the race. And it seems so inconsistent when they decide to call it and when they don't. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, with the, with this being a crown jewel, with it being a 600 mile race, I really, really, really wish the weather, they knew the weather was coming. Yeah. So, so why not plan for it? Why not make an announcement beforehand? Why not finish it all? Um, a little bit different, you know, if you have, if you give the drivers an overnight and have them come back to finish the last 200 miles, it's not really the full 600. But nonetheless, I think there's a lot of stuff that they should consider um, and take a page out of IndyCar's book and really start having that plan in advance and communicating it to everybody so they know what's going to happen. Yeah, if you think about it, let's just say a half hour before they made the decision to postpone it. You're saying, so what I would be saying to myself then is, well, what was different 30 minutes earlier? Mm -hmm. You know, tell me what, if you would have exactly. decided to start 
if you thought maybe it would have, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you should have known at some point before the last hour that you made everybody wait, that you knew what your plan was. And if you didn't, well, what, how, how could you not know? Uh, and if it had to do with, well, we don't know, now it looks like we might not end a race till three o'clock. Well, you're telling me two o'clock's okay, but three o'clock's not. I don't think the fans care, especially the ones that are there. So yeah, it's uh, there. Yeah, absolutely. And and even still, I mean, people, it, it's a holiday weekend, so they had more flexibility. They have more flexibility than they would on a typical weekend. They've so often brought back on a non-holiday weekend the the racers on on Monday, and that's to get the race in. And if it's not past halfway, etc. Uh, but yeah, I think for all parties involved, it, it would be best to try to make some kind of adjustment whether it's starting earlier or whatever we already knew that kyle larson wasn't going to make it in time given what was happening in indianapolis so there was no reason necessarily to not try to bump up the start for for nascar to get it an hour or two earlier in but yeah, what did you think about that so, so but, and, and by the way i don't think i've i don't remember the last time nascar did bump their race up an hour or two to start i mean that's just no. something we've talked about for years which is just yeah. mind-boggling why they won't do that uh it just doesn't make any sense especially when i've said repeatedly the pga tour does it all the time and again it only happens to them once a year but hey if we have to start at nine o'clock in the morning and completely miss our window for coverage with television that day and it's only going to be a pre it's, it's going to be a pre-recorded kind of deal so be it at least we get it in on time why nascar just doesn't do that i don't understand so yeah um no idea um the whole kyle larson thing it was surprising um you know back to that question as to him choosing the indy 500 over coke coca-cola 600 um guaranteed the fact that he's got to apply for a waiver now which he'll get to, he will get um it would be Boy, would that be a controversy if they said no, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, he knew beforehand. Let's he knew beforehand, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, interesting decision. He knew he wasn't going to make it. And then, of course, perfect timing. The second he gets there and gets his helmet on and has a chance to jump in the car, the rain starts falling in Charlotte. So never actually got the chance. But Yeah, it almost worked out for him. Almost, yeah. yeah. And I know a lot of people were disappointed by that. But again, that's another reason why it's like, why we would why couldn't you just finish the race at three or four in the morning? I don't understand, but okay. Um, and as far as Kyle, as far as uh, uh, Kyle Larson, so uh, what did you think? What do you think about, so what is the, how does it work? So if Kyle gets into the car, finishes the race, what's the difference between what points he gets or doesn't get as opposed to if he didn't get into the car halfway through the race? Uh, at that point, it doesn't, mar it doesn't matter. It's all about who starts the car. And so it, does, it never start. mattered at that point. He was not going to get any points. It was just for him being in the car trying to win the race, and that's it. Correct, and it probably would have been a little bit more of an uh, impetus to say, hey, NASCAR, we've made our best efforts to be able to get him here, and we got him in the car, and we, he was able to do laps. So that gives them a little bit more, um, you know, backbone to their argument to, of being granted a, a playoff waiver which i again i think he'll get anyway it yeah. would be remarkably shocking if nascar said to one of their leading drivers no i'm sorry you can't go in because you we knew you were doing this and sure. you knew you were doing this and we all agreed to it in advance but then we're gonna you know kind of yeah. screw you over because we can um you what know, do you think about the rule as far as all the driver has to do is start the race for one lap come in and the next guy goes in and the driver who starts the race gets the points. Mm. That rule in particular, I, I'm not a huge fan of. It's always been in NASCAR, whoever starts it. Um, other other series, you've been able to, to take the car uh, midway and whoever finishes the race or whoever drives the most laps or whatever. It's generally... That makes sense. Finishes the race. Um, well, that makes sense too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it's a NASCAR quirk. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion. I, I it happens so rarely and so infrequently. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I still think that it, it's okay the way it is. You don't need to change it. Um, I do. Again, I would be shocked. Absolutely shocked oh, yeah. if they, they did not give Larson a waiver. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 and and yeah, he, he was, he's going to be fine. And again, 
in case anybody doesn't know, it's not about needing the waiver uh, if he doesn't happen to qualify to get in. It's that, that he has to what drive the exact number of races that is on the schedule, correct? He has to start the exact number of races. And to see how many waivers that they've granted in the past, I don't know that they've ever denied a waiver request. Yeah. I can't recall anyone. Yeah. But granted, most of them have been through injury or illness, but I mean, this this kind of falls into the same category. It's good for both sports. He's a, he's a top driver, top team, uh, a star in both series, drew a lot of attention, earned a lot of money for, for both series. So it, it would be... It'd be really bad of NASCAR to, to not allow it. But nonetheless, you know, they still haven't made a decision yet. So we'll see. Uh, I was watching um, uh, Eric Estep's video and he made a comment uh, trying to compare Kyle Larson to uh, Dale Jr., Jeff Gordon uh, regarding, you know, his, um, I guess, influence in the sport, uh, him being a star. Look, I am not. I'm not on the ground with these fans. I know there's a completely different uh, group of fans in NASCAR. There's, uh, you know, the the new fans, and then there's the old time fans and the traditionalists, and and maybe some of the tradition. And I don't to tell you the truth. I don't even know. Take, I, I think more of the new fans probably. This is one where where they're probably on. My, um, this is. I want to put it this way. This is one where the traditionalists are probably on my side with this, which is. I don't see Kyle Larson as one of those figures. I just don't. I don't think he's got, in my opinion, the charisma. I, I just think he's a great driver who can do great things because he can race and be competitive in the IndyCar series and the NASCAR, which is, I think is awesome. But I don't just, I, I'm sorry, I just put, I just don't put him in that level. I just don't think he has that type of like, okay, I'm going to now transcend the sport which i think was actually the word eric used i'm i'm now going to transcend the sport i'm going to go like on tv shows and do things and people will recognize me and i'm going to be that dale jr jeff gordon type i just i don't see it yeah i completely agree i mean how many songs can you point to where jeff gordon or dale or and hart jr are named in songs in pop culture versus outside of you know outside of the racing world how many are Kyle Larson and absolutely nothing? How many TV shows have uh, Earnhardt and, and Gordon and others done cameos in and, and Larson has not? Yeah, he's a great driver and he'll go and he'll race anything, uh, you know, wherever throughout the week. And he'll he'll do extremely well, with, regardless of the series. And it's it's great to see all of that. But he does not. He's not going on the morning shows. He's not going yeah. on sitcoms doing cameos he's not showing up in music videos and doing all that stuff and that's because he's focused in on the racing and that's fine and that's you know that's what he loves that's yeah. what he does that's where he gets his bread and butter and, and he loves it but also to the point look at just within racing you know how many times has he been voted nascar's most popular driver zero sure. <laughs> good point yeah there are others that yeah. um are are successful, um, you know, champions as well. Uh, maybe not champions that, that get voted ahead of him as well. So I, I think the proof is right there, even with those fans. Yeah, he's great and he's a, a star of the sport. But to that point, I, I agree with you. I wouldn't put him up there with uh, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Jr. or some of the others either. He's got to start making that in order to get there. He's got to start transcending the sport yeah. and bring outside of uh, racing. And, and you either have it, in my opinion, or you don't. And and that's okay. Not everybody yeah. just has that Absolutely. special thing that gives them the ability to transcend the sport or transcend their industry. So, all right. Enjoy Illinois 300. So we go to this week. Oh, and, and by the way, as far as the end of the Indy 500, we should talk just a second about that because um, I don't know if you recall, but I – Pato Award was one of my picks, so I was really, well. yep. <laughs> I, I was really, you know, there. Uh, and was it again? Because I'm not a big expert on IndyCar racing, but was it one of those things where it was more just like a timing thing? Like if it would have been another lap, Pato Award probably would have passed them. Was that basically what it was coming down to at that point? It was all about the timing, and you could see in the two laps, uh, if you looked at the last three laps, they showed a lot of onboard camera on Pato, and you could hear 
him in the throttle as he sucked up to the back in the draft of Joseph Newgarden. He purposely backed off and, and didn't make the move because he was waiting till that last lap. And with this new car, the way that IndyCar races now at the speedway, it has almost always come down now to a last lap pass. And so going into turn one, it made all the sense in the world for Pazzo to go and make that make that run. Unfortunately for him, I think that compromised probably his exit out of turn two, and he just didn't have the momentum, whereas Newgarden was expecting it and had planned for it and did, got the run, and boy, was that a whale of a pass that, that, that Newgarden put in on him on turn three. That is not an easy move on the outside. It's two great drivers. You know, we've seen great drivers try to take that move in the past and almost always have crashed. At least oh, that could have been a big wreck. It could have been a very big wreck. Yeah. Um, they were both very clean, no contact, no squeezing, no um, you know dirty driving whatsoever. If that's NASCAR, uh, that's that's a wreck because those totally. guys are going to go. And again, that's because they have the equipment too. It, it's very totally true. different. Very true. Um, so you know, all the credit to New Garden in the world. He he knew it was coming and set himself up to be able to counter for it. Uh, I think if Pato probably had, I, I think Pato was doing everything that he thought was right as well. I think if he probably had been closer to the front of the field at the finish of prior Indy 500s, he might have timed it slightly differently. That would have given him a different edge. But this is really the first time that Pato's had the car to be able to keep him in the mix all the way through to the end. He's either crashed out or, or not been there in the end. So it was a new experience for him, whereas Newgarden had been there before, and New Car Newgarden just kind of put the move on him and outsmarted him. I think next year, uh, in the same situation, Pato would do something a little bit differently, probably give himself a little bit better of a chance. So it's really the opposite regarding the drafting situation for IndyCar and NASCAR, correct? Where it's like if you're in NASCAR in the Cup Series, uh, you want to be in front. But it right. seems like in the IndyCar series, it's more an advantage for you to be in the back. You definitely want to be in second place and you want to be having the advantage of pulling that draft on that last lap. You do not want to be the one that's having to defend on the last lap. Uh, it used to be it used to be different. Uh, but with this car and with this package, the way that it's been the past three to five years or so, uh, you definitely don't want to be in the, the leader is probably the worst place to be in the last two laps. All right. And so and by the way, because of the timing of the race, um, what I was doing was with my wagers, I was like, all right, well, you know what? Um, award. I put an award in Polo. And, and of course, I put like a couple bucks on Ferrucci, uh, who was 20 to one. But they were both like low enough at eight or 10 to one. I was like, well, I don't want to put a whole lot on them because they're low numbers. So what I'll do is I'm going to put a little bit of a parlay. And um, and if and if they win, then I've got them with my top three drivers in NASCAR and it's going to be perfect. I don't have to wager on it. I can sit back and watch. So the rain delay happens, screws everything up. Uh, so I have to now wager on my drivers anyway and figure, all right, well, if I, if, if pedal award wins, I could just double my money now. Um, but uh, it actually wound up working out even though I would have doubled my money because Christopher Bell was of course, one of my top picks. Uh, so even though I made money, I could have made double the money and, um, and and I got to say, it's one of those times because last week we talked about it. We went over the stats. We went over the trends. And this is why and it doesn't always happen. But this is why you have to have a gut feeling. And that's exactly what I said. I said, I'm not sure why. I just I have a feeling about Christopher Bell this week. And I didn't know if it was going to be because of the rain out. And hey, you know what? It's the first time it ever worked out for me. First time ever in 25 years where I was able to get and steal the win because of NASCAR saying no more, we're stopping the race. And it felt good, even though uh, I didn't want to see it end that way. But I thought at least the right driver won too, because he was at that point of the race, the best driver. Now you could say what you want about Brett Keselowski, and maybe he would have been really good in the second half of the race. We have no idea, but Bell it was still the best driver in the first half of the race. Yeah, completely agree. He ended up leading the most laps of those that were run. Um, my only holdback, you know, no, 
no qualms about choosing him. Um, my only holdback for not choosing him above some of the others that we talked about was just be, just his momentum coming into the race. Sure. His consistency, therefore, we knew he had speed. We knew he could be competitive. The question would be just whether or not he could do it over the full distance. And we just didn't get to the full distance, like you said. And uh, he happened. He was the best driver up until that point, without question. I think it was 90 laps led out of whatever they ended up running, um, which was 20 some more probably than the the next highest person. So. Yeah, he was he was on form. Uh, it would have been nice to have seen what would have happened when in the dark and as the rest of that race rode on. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, it happens and sometimes it happens in your favor. Sometimes it do- doesn't for most of you and I. It, it tends not to go. It tends. Yeah. <laughs> 90, 90 percent of the time it doesn't. Uh, so it was nice for it to finally work out. Uh, no question about that. And um, uh, here's the other thing before we start breaking down this race uh, this week is that uh Maybe part of the reason I felt that way was last year, Ryan Blaney won the race, and it was my pick to win the championship. Christopher Bell's my pick to win the championship this year, as you know, and now he won the Coke 600. So that makes me feel kind of good that maybe there is some karma there for Christopher Bell this year, because he's already won twice this year. And again, we talked about it last week. It's been a quiet year season for him, and he's already got a win, and now he's got two wins. So it's a very quiet two-win season for Christopher Bell. Yeah, and it's all about, we've talked about it so many times, it's all about peaking at the right time. You've got to get your win early in, in the season to be able to guarantee yourself a playoff spot. You can virtually then take a vacation, uh, just work on um, making sure that you're, you've are you got your best package and, and everything going for you when you get to the playoffs. The only problem with that is that NASCAR is such a momentum sport that it, it's so hard to get, get it back once you've lost it. Yeah. Um, uh, so you, you don't want to slip too far. Um, and you know, Bell, they keep continuing to return to victory lane. That's going to help him out in the long run. Uh, I see this team as well, um, with these, the way that they've performed, um, certainly last weekend, uh, being able to, to really peak when it gets to yeah. the playoff time. So I, I think they're going to be in a very good position once we get to the championship race. Okay. Now here, we haven't looked at the futures lately. So here they are. Um, let's take a look at some. Uh, so I haven't looked at him myself in a few weeks, so let me see. So Christopher Bell is not eight to one, which is still a good number. Uh, so especially since uh, he's got two wins, but you can look at it that if you still think he's going to race like this for the next say six weeks, which he could, uh, and doesn't get some really uh, consistent runs going, then that eight to one probably goes up a little bit more because maybe he's not getting enough respect with the two wins. So you can look at it that way. That maybe oh, I'll wait a little bit for Christopher Bell. Maybe I'll get back to ten or twelve to one. Um, look, Martin Truex Jr. is eleven to one. That that just sticks out at me right away. That is that's a pretty good number. That's a Martin very Truex. good number. Yeah. Uh, Reddick is now down to 12. I think the last time we talked about him being a bargain, he was around 15 or 16. So 12 is still a good number for Reddick, for Blaney. Kozlowski is now down to 14. Chastain's 18. Logano's 20. And you get the feeling, I think Logano's done uh, just enough that you know that he is more than capable of putting together a really big run at some point this season and I know Blaney and Logano have been a little slow this year, but you could still see that it could come. And so Logano, Busher, 25. Yeah, there, there's some pretty good numbers. And even Alex Bowman has had a very quietly consistent start to the season, and he's 40 to 1. What if he goes out <laughs> there and wins? He's probably going to go down to about 15. So I think even Bowman is not a bad idea at this point. Yeah, completely agree. I mean, to have a Hendrick Carr, uh, number 48, um, you know, a guy that can steal wins and then also can be pretty streaky as well. Um, we're so far away from the playoffs uh, to be at 40 to one for, for that driver. Definitely worth a, a couple of dollars right there. Who do you like uh, as far as a bargain, the best? Uh, well, probably Truex, to be honest with you. I mean, 11 to one, he just hasn't gotten into victory lane at this point. He's a Joe Gibbs driver. They've been extremely strong. Uh, this season so I, I think again if it, and he's been so good on short tracks and 1.5 mile ovals in his career you know get to the playoffs with a win under his belt I think Martin Truex could go pretty far in yeah and keep in mind once Martin Truex wins that will probably cut in half to like five or six he'll probably be one of the favorites so take a look at him all right now Let's go through uh, the race here. We don't really have a whole lot to go on because we've only had two races. And um, 
what we do have to share regarding any stats or trends. Uh, so we got Kyle winning as the defending champ. Joe Vichevi was on the pole. 2022, it was Logano with a Ford starting seventh. So both have started in the top 10, uh, which probably it is, isn't a surprise because this is this is so far, this has been a boring track. Doesn't seem to be a lot of passing. So I would think you'd want to start up front. Um, and then you, the, the, the one manufacturer that sticks out the most for me is Ford because if you look at it, there was a little inconsistency between Chevy the first year, major improvement year two. Toyota, they've just been okay. But Ford, last year, six of the top 13, and they com- let it combine 83 laps. That was second best. In 2022, they had three of the top five, including the winner, and led the, the second most by just three laps at 117 combined laps. So they have been the most consistent here so far. And by the way, it's just a month ago, everybody uh, w- w- wondering about Ford again. And every time they wonder about Ford, here they all of a sudden they've won two of the last four races, and it's Chevy. After another great start, they always get up these great starts. They have not won in the last four races and has just one win in the last seven. Yeah, and you mentioned about the starting position. Yeah, this this track is difficult to pass at. It's got two different radius corners. It's not the greatest, steepest banking that gives drivers tons of room. You might have multiple grooves at the wider end of the track, but not necessarily at the more narrow end. Um, and yeah, we don't have a lot of history. Both uh, cup races were won by somebody that started inside the top 10. But if you look at the truck series, that they've done 23 races at this track and only two drivers have ever won starting outside of the top 10. Oh. So again, you really want to be starting inside the top 10. If you're setting up your fantasy roster, if you're looking at picks, um, you know, obviously go, go, go forth. And with the values that you see that we talk about here today, get those early if they're further on down the value chain. Uh, but after qualifying those those guys in the top 10 are going to be, you know, significantly more expensive than they are today. Um, and, you know, Hamlin and Larson, as we're looking at here on the screen, they're probably not going to change much. So you can wait on them, uh, see how they practice and qualify. But uh, qualifying is going to be very important here, as is track position throughout the afternoon. Yeah, I was just taking a look at those. Uh, matter of fact, let me pop it up here so everybody can see. I was taking a look at those uh, finishes. Well, here's the cup. Now here, even in Xfinity, if you go mm-hmm. right here, look at that. Kozlowski broke the string. Well, they haven't raced here since 2010, but yep. still, even when they were racing here, because the last, because he was the last one to race here. Otherwise, the last would look at that. Was that 12 yep. all in the top 10? Exactly right. And then there's the truck series, and then you can see all the top tens, um, except this one here, basically. So yeah. Yep. All right now. Let's get back to um, – oh, and you thought that uh, – well, actually, I was taking a look at some of the st- – from, from, from our track notes. So uh, New Hampshire and Darlington would be the, considered the most similar. Uh, New Hampshire, um, more uh, – because they have longer straights. And Darlington, um, sort of similar to the different sized corners. So okay. no New Hampshire, though, this year. I wouldn't worry about last year. But you can if you want to. Darlington would be the one racetrack to look at then. Yeah, and, and even that's bit. not not highly comparable. It's it's more like New Hampshire because the banking oh. just isn't there. The surface is a little bit newer, um, so it's tough to find a comparison. But a track position track that's a you know um, a, a faster one, New Hampshire would be it. So yeah, you know Darlington, but at a discount. Okay, so uh, here are the top drivers and Denny Hamlin. Uh, it, we should say something. He's he's the favorite, not Kyle Larson. Uh, and maybe uh, it's because also Denny Hamlin is the leader right now in points. It's Denny Hamlin. So as well he should be. Uh, he is uh, definitely been the best driver this year so far. Uh, he comes in here with four straight top fives and a win. He's got three wins on the season. And by the way, this is a shorter type track. Not a short track, but a shorter type track. A little over a mile. He's already won on one mile and two short tracks this year. Um, fourth at Darlington, too, for what that's worth. Second in this race last year. Uh, had an incident in the first year, so can't say what he would have done there. But again, you are talking about 5-1. to one. Then you got Larson, Byron, and Blaney in this. Uh, let's just talk about these four here. Um, Larson, 
eh, I don't really see anything spectacular here. So I always you always look for excuses not to take some of these favorites. So I can kind of look at it this week and go, eh, maybe I don't really need to take Kyle Larson this week. William Byron, eh, he's been okay here. Nothing great. Same thing, maybe. Blaney, um, the only the main reason, sort of like we were talking about Christopher Bell last week, that's the only reason to not go with Ryan Blaney because he's just in a little bit of a rut now, as he often gets, uh, and a lot of drivers do. Um, but he's been really good here in both runs, so keep that in mind. Yeah, I think Denny Hamlin definitely deserves to be the favorite. I think he would have done significantly better in 2022, if you remember that was one of the incidents that year with, of him with Ross Chastain. Ah. Uh, he kind of threw that race away, trying to ruin Chastain's race. Okay. So uh, discount his 34th place finish. That said, he hasn't led any laps here, though he was the runner-up uh, at the race last year, though obviously a, a worthy favorite here coming into this weekend. As far as Kyle Larson goes, um, if he qualified better, I think he'd probably be uh, you know, a, a better selection. You can definitely wait to see uh, how he qualifies this weekend. He, his two starts were 15th and 22nd. His best finish was fourth. Again, if he qualifies inside the top 10, why wouldn't he you know, be a contender for the win? I think he absolutely would be. Just qualifying the first two races here haven't been his strong suit. So at those odds, you can wait. Uh, they're not going to come down you know, a whole heck of a lot if he qualifies inside the top 10. They will come down a little, uh, but not a ton. So you can wait to see how he qualifies. Then out of the two, William By Byron and Ryan Blaney again. Byron, nothing huge. He did lead 30 laps uh, in the race last year, finished inside the top 10. He's kind of faded a little bit in recent weeks, so that's probably my bigger concern in going with Byron. Okay. Um, like he said with Blaney, um, he is in a bit of a slump, but this has been a Ford track. So yep. if there's a place where Blaney can turn a slump around, I I don't see why it couldn't come this weekend. So uh, obviously wait to see where he qualifies eight point, you know, at a plus 850 or whatever not going to get uh too much lower maybe a six or five uh if he qualifies on the front row or something like that uh, so you have a little bit of room to wait but uh, out of this bunch certainly hamlin would be the favorite probably yeah. my second guess would be or my second pick and this would be more of a, a gut feel versus uh anything concrete would be blaney well yeah and because we don't know when he's going to get out of it um yep. but yeah, why not it be this week, especially if he does qualify? Because that's also been what has been the problem the last few weeks. You can see it after qualifying and practice. So if he qualifies and practices well, that might be your first sign that maybe this is the week to take him. So, Agreed. okay. Truex is also 8-1. to one. And uh, let's, uh, let's go with these four. Truex, Bell, Reddick, and Gibbs. And Truex also 8-1. to one. Bell winning back-to-back, -back, unlikely. Reddick, 12. Gibbs, 12. So Truex, he's the one that really sticks out for me. I like the fact that we're getting 8-1 to one odds. We know he's overdue for a win. Uh, he was much faster last week in practice and qualifying, which is, which is what we said with Blaney. That was a good sign. Who knows what happens if they got the extra 200 miles on Sunday. And he's fifth and sixth here, so those are two good finishes. Also, I was just doing a little bit. And again, I said, you know, not have to take too much into it because it was last year, but still, I did look at in last year's New Hampshire race, and that was won by Martin Truex Jr. Yeah, Truex, I would say he's one that you probably go with now. Um, he's likely going to qualify well. He, he started 13th and 5th in the two races here. The, the race that he started 13th, actually, in 2022, he led 42 laps. And he finished 5th and 6th in both of those races. So two top 10s back-to-back. -back. Knows this track, like you said, very successful at at New Hampshire, he's been good at the one mile tracks in general. Uh, and Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, you know, Truex just needs a little bit of luck on his side and he's going to make it to victory lane. And he could easily challenge teammate Denny Hamlin. Uh, so I think certainly Truex is the better value here. Christopher Bell, like you said, um, ninth and 11th in his two uh, finishes or two starts here. Uh, going back to back weeks, especially considering his inconsistency and his up and ups and downs uh, more recently, I wouldn't expect him to go back to back with wins. So he's probably somebody that I would discount and I would end up going with Truex in this instance. Yeah, Reddick, um, uh, now we let, uh, the odds are better now at 12 to 1. We understand why they're better, but that does intrigue me about Reddick because he was in that wreck last year, so I don't know. And, and, and look, he doesn't have any good results here so far, um, but he did lead 174 laps at Darlington, and he was sixth at New Hampshire last year, if you want to take that into consideration. But 
obviously I wouldn't even think of him at eight to one, but at 12 to one now, I'm a little bit curious uh, with Redick. Um, yeah, for me, he'd have to be one where you think that this week he's going to do something special. <clears throat> and you'd have to take him now because he tends yes. to qualify well. He's qualified inside the top 10 both times here. He just hasn't finished inside the top 10. He crashed out last year, finished 35th. The year before that, he started fourth and finished 16th. So it's about finishing the race. And so far this season, finishing the race in a strong position has kind of been his weak point. Uh, so unless you think that, you know, something unique out of him this weekend is just going to turn that kind of trend, or that trajectory around, um, you got to take him now. Definitely don't wait. Um, but he's not one that would rise to the top of my list just based on the fact that two races here, he's failed to finish in the top 10 both times, despite starting inside the top 10. Yeah, uh, great point. Absolutely. So if you're going to take him without question, take him now. Um, next group, we've got some Fords. Kozlowski Logano. We also have Kyle Bush Elliott. Uh, so Kozlowski, though, look, I know is I know the results weren't good here last year. And really, if you take a look at it, Busher, eh, uh, I, both of them really haven't done anything here. So that's one thing. And the odds are now down to 12 to 1 instead of 18 to 1, which is okay. All of that saying, he's a Ford. He won Darlington for whatever that's worth. And he's just really hot right now. And because of that, I think he has to be a take this week at 12 to 1. Yeah, I, I would agree just based on his current trajectory. The only thing, like you said, is just at this track, he's he's not done anything. His best starting position was 19th. His best finishing position was 20th. Clearly racing better now and has better equipment now than he's had in either of those years. Uh, so this, without question, should be his best finish in this series at this track this weekend. It should be here. Uh, he should be running within the top five, you know, considering where he's been each week up until then. I think if Keselowski's a must-take, I think Logano is actually a must-take as well because, again, a forward... Um, you know, we've talked about him, you know, being able to get something going and he just needs that, that little bit of luck, a little bit of good fortune to come his direction. He's started inside the top 10 both times. Oh yeah. Finished inside the top five, both times, won it in 2022, third last year. I think if we don't see something great out of Logano this week, it's <laughs> going to be a little while before I think the team's going to turn it around. So I think you got to take Logano and Keselowski right now. Yes, matter of fact, um, also keep this in mind that uh, Logano was second last year in New Hampshire. Kozlowski was fifth last year in New Hampshire. So these are all good signs with the odds that say, yes, uh, take the two forwards there, Kozlowski and Logano at 12 and 14 to 1. And who knows, maybe this is the race that gets Logano going. It's possible. Uh, what about, uh, we didn't really mention Bush and Elliott. Uh, Elliot, I think even though you're getting good number here at 16, there's a reason for that. Uh, look, he didn't race last year, didn't do much the first year, uh, but still it is 16 to one, understanding that Chevy is going through a little bit of a drought, as we mentioned. And then Kyle Busch, well, speaking of droughts, uh, Kyle is still kind of uh, in, in, in that kind of uh, bad zone, but he is the defending champ. He led about 50% of the laps last year. He finished second the year before that, leading a good number of laps. So I just can't, I mean, how do you not take Kyle at 15 to one, considering how good he's been here? Without question, you have to take Kyle Busch this week. <laughs> yeah, we've only had two races here, but he has been by far the best driver. 187 laps led across the two races. Started 12th, finished runner-up in 2022. Started first and finished first last year. Uh, I don't care what kind of streak he's on. This is a, a track that Kyle Busch just gets, and he's been better than anybody else, regardless of what car he's been in. That was, you know, 2022 is in the Joe Gibbs. Uh, 2023 was in Childress. So um, certainly a dis different situation maybe this year than he was in last year, but still this is a great check for Kyle Busch and those odds right now are exceptional. All right. Now let's move on to the next uh, group of four. Uh, and uh, we've got Busher, Chastain, Wallace, and Bowman. Now Busher, I'm willing to pass this week. If you really look at it, he's kind of been struggling. 
And it's not because he hasn't had a couple of good shots, and it's really because there's just bad luck right now for the most part, or at least half the part. It's just been luck. We saw what happened last year, uh, last week, with not being able to, 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 to qualify, and otherwise, he was right there. I mean, who knows what could have happened all, all, uh, all day on Sunday if he would have not crashed on Saturday. Um, but yeah, I mean, the good thing is he's 18-1, to and he's driving a Ford. But still, yeah, there's just something about it. Uh, 12th last year. And then uh, Chastain, that's a big number at 20. Um, you always, and, and, and I guess there's always going to be a driver or two because of the competitiveness in this uh, series that you're going to get good odds with. And it just happens to be Ross Chastain at this point. Uh, I'm not sure I see anything, though, at this po- uh, yet. But he is such a high number that... I'm willing to wait at qualifying to see because even if he qualifies and practices well, you should still get a good number. Um, uh, but if you're looking for a long shot, he's not the worst idea. Um, and then you got Bubba uh, and uh, Bowman at forty to one. Um, I, I don't see much in uh, in Bubba based on the stats, that, and I don't really see a whole lot in Bowman either, except that he's really off to, to a good start as we talked about. Yeah, I agree. Out of this group, you want to go with Chastain, and I think you can also wait um, because if you're getting forty to one, uh, or I'm sorry, twenty to one right now for for Chastain, if you look at his starting position, he's always started inside the top ten, so tenth and eighth were his starting positions. So he typically qualifies well. So you're getting a discount on him right out of the gate. If he does qualify well, I think you're right that it's those odds aren't going to come down drastically. He did finish eighth the first year. Um, and then 22nd in 2023. And remember, he was going back and forth with Hamlin uh, at that time as well. Hamlin was trying to hold him out up. So he probably could have done even better than that eighth place finish uh, that he had in 2022. But, um, you know, of this group, certainly Chastain would be the one that is most intriguing. But I, I agree with you. I think you've got room to wait until you see what practice and qualifying does. Uh, if he qualifies outside the top 10, you know, stay, stay away from him without question. If he goes inside the top 10, you feel and his numbers don't change a ton uh that's pretty decent value by the way uh just uh, keep in mind too and i know w- w- we've already talked about truex but i was just looking over some other information and when he won new hampshire's race last year he led 254 of the 301 laps so uh it wasn't it wasn't just a win it was a dominating <laughs> performance so all right now as far as the rest of the long shots there you see them gregson barry briscoe at 60 you get and then you get the big numbers i mean how embarrassing it must be for austin dillon to be 250 to one um I, and look at this by the way ricky stenhouse is a thousand to one uh i don't know about i mean Sindrick to me is a little bit interesting uh only because he's raced well here i i, I, I don't think any of these guys are gonna win okay but if you like to bet long shots uh, Sindrick has actually performed well here and he's driving a Ford. So I would definitely say, hey, put a buck on him. Josh Berry might be interesting too. He's driving a Ford and he is coming off his best back to back cup results of the season. He was also third at Darlington for what that's worth. Uh, so as far as the, the, the long shots, um, I would probably go Berry, Sindrick, maybe Briscoe because he's also driving a Ford. I'd keep an eye on him, and he's had you know a much better year so far this year, as we know. And Noah Gregson's also driving a Ford at sixty to one, and we also have seen him uh, do pretty decent things so far this season. So th- those would be some of the ones that I would look at if, um, and and I don't know, maybe even McDowell because he's driving a Ford and he's two hundred and fifty to one, and he's been doing a really good job of qualifying every week. McDowell's actually stepped up his game from earlier in the season, so he started to find some traction, started moving things in the right direction. He's not going to be with that team next year, so you know his turnaround in form kind of coincided with that announcement that he'd be leaving at the end of the year, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, I, Austin Sindrick, if you're putting together a fantasy roster and you're looking down at the lower end of the, the price scale, trying to fill out those bottom end slots i think austin Sindrick is definitely one that you've got to consider 11th and 13th and his two finishes here and he started inside the top 10 both of those times again i, I probably wouldn't wager on him <clears throat> unless i really like going for long shots i don't necessarily think that he's going to win uh but then also like you said any of the Stuart haas uh cars i think could be good barry 
uh, Gregson, you know, Gregson crashed out last week, unfortunately, after colliding with Stenhouse. Um, and then also Briscoe has been racing pretty well. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how any of those drivers do with Stuart Haas's announcement that they're closing up shop at the end of this year. So maybe that coincides and, and, and goes along the McDowell path where McDowell said he was leaving the team and then found a turnaround in form. Maybe Stuart Haas racing now. Uh, announcing that they're not going to be, be back next year. Maybe that starts to turn up the wick a little bit and they start really pushing a little bit extra trying to get that success. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. I think uh, out of that bunch, uh, I probably wouldn't go with Cindric. I definitely would take Cindric from a fantasy standpoint, but I'd probably look more at Gregson, maybe even more so Briscoe, just because I think both of those drivers have been racing pretty well and getting some pretty decent finishes and moving forward. And then obviously Josh Berry uh, coming off a pretty good string of results would be a good one as well. I, those would be my long shot. Yeah, and, and, and you know, maybe there will be some karma this week for the Stuart Haas drivers. You never know. Mm -hmm. uh, so Briscoe, Berry, and Gregson, I don't know. May, maybe you uh, maybe you go ahead and uh, throw a buck on each of them just in case something dramatic happens. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's just a crazy story. Um, we'll see what the overall fallout is, uh, but it's going to take a while. This, though, I will say it's just another reason why that this whole silly season – uh, free agency during the season stuff. I mean, you don't hear like if, if it's just sort of like saying um, like a football team uh, <laughs> halfway through the season, the general manager says, well, the whole front office is not going to be back next year. Just so you know, uh, coach eight, coaches ain't going to be back. I don't even know if the players are going to be here. So go ahead, go, go, go have fun the rest of the season. I mean, it's just silly. That's why it's silly season. But maybe you shouldn't call it silly season. Maybe they call it ridiculous season because uh, they should just get away with it. I know it's not going to happen anytime soon, but maybe by the time, uh, you know, uh, your, 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 your kids uh, – how many kids you have? Just one. Just one. Maybe have, by, by the time your kid's older, he'll, he'll, he'll be lucky enough to go, really? They did that stuff? That, that's, that sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, it was maybe. weird. It was kind of dumb, wasn't it? But can you anyway. imagine can you imagine baseball or, or football any of the teams in major league or nfl you know halfway through the season just saying, oh yeah we're gonna go out of business at the end of the season it's our last one yeah what <laughs> i know right not sure about your i'm not sure where you're gonna live what your paycheck's gonna look like yeah we'll, we'll try to help you find a job but uh you know right now nothing's guaranteed so yeah. just yeah like you said go out and have fun for the rest of the year it's crazy <laughs> it just is and uh yeah that's NASCAR. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get into picks. So uh, I'm looking at uh, Truex, Kozlowski, and Kyle Busch. I don't think we're going to have too much of a different take here. No, we're not going to have any kind of different. Truex and Kyle Busch are my two biggest picks for sure. Uh, if you want a, if you want a true long shot, um, hmm. Maybe uh, I'll go with Briscoe for the karma for Stuart Haas. Okay. And by the way, uh, looking at Logano and Kyle Busch, they're kind of almost long shots in a way. I mean, they're mm -hmm. not when you compare them to the 60 to ones of the world and even the 40 to ones, but uh, they're, they're, they're kind of little kind of, I mean, they're definitely big enough where you have to take them, as we said, and have to be considered really the top, sleepers if you want to put it that way so absolutely uh briscoe will put him in there okay excellent all right so next week we have sonoma correct that is correct and out to wine country to do some turning right and left should and be exciting the whole track was repaved so oh. uh, we'll see what that does uh for the racing there this year always a good track to visit and iowa uh, going to Iowa after that on June 16th. That'll be a night race, of course, on a Sunday night. Never never a Saturday night anymore. Always a Sunday night before everybody's got to get back up and go to work and probably storms in Iowa uh, in a summer evening as well. That's great. Uh, and and, and <laughs> what, what, we'll talk more about what Iowa is about um, maybe next week. So uh, but... Almost a 1.5 mile oval, yeah. Let's just hope it's better than Illinois, and let's hope the third year is the charm uh, for this race on uh, Sunday. And, and what, Gateway, is that what they're slaying for this track so they don't have to say Worldwide Technology Raceway? They just say Gateway? 
the full name is Worldwide Technology Raceway at Gateway, at Gateway. but most people just refer to it as Gateway. Okay. Um, it's a uh, yeah, it's an interesting one that they brought back a couple of years ago. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe this year it'll produce something better than we've expected. Um, but it just tends not to be one of my favorite tracks. Yeah, it, 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 it better be one of those situations where if it doesn't work again this year, it's time to think of something else. So I would agree. I think at, at, they have, at this time in the sport, they have more than enough options now. They can go, but oh, we'll go to two races here. We'll try something new. You don't have to stay at a track that's not working. So. Correct. All right, so uh, we'll have the link to your fantasy report from rotorwire.com. So look out for that when I post the qualifying and practice report on Saturday. Hopefully, it's an early qualifying practice run. I'm not sure. I haven't looked to see what time it was, but um, if it is in the morning, like most of them have been, uh, we should have a video up by early afternoon. So check that out. Uh, again, that'll be uh, posted at uh, most likely on the Mystery Caution uh, website, uh, uh, YouTube channel, uh, but uh, check them out both, and we'll also have links on both uh, channels whenever we have a video, so you can always kind of move back and forth. Uh, but primarily, check out Mystery Caution. That's our motorsports channel, and no F1 this week, of course. Back with F1 next week with Canada, correct? That is correct, and just so you know, NASCAR Cup qualifying is Saturday at 10, 8, 10 15 a.m. Oh. Eastern, so Excellent. it will be a play one. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for that. Uh, much better. Okay. CJ, appreciate it as always. We'll talk to you again next week.